Welcome, welcome to the Men of Impact podcast with your boy LAC. I'm happy you're here with me. What happens to us when we die? Where do we go? You know, a lot of people, they really believe that when they pass away, nothing happens. They just stop existing. Other people, they believe when they pass away, they come back as something else. But let me tell you what happens to us when we pass away. Death is a doorway. It leads to eternity, right? And so because death is a doorway, that means whatever you do here on earth, how how you live here on earth will determine where you go. As Christians, we believe in heaven and hell. So that means if you live according to God's way while you were on earth, while you had this physical body, talking about your flesh, that means when you pass away, you're going to be with God in eternity and enjoy his presence. However, if you live outside of God's will and you rejected God, when you die and pass away, you're going to be living eternity in the lake of fire with Satan and all the other fallen angels and those who rejected God. I think of death like a semicolon. In other words, there's a comma and there's a period. The flesh stops to exist, that's the period but the spirit continues, that's a comma. And so whether you like it or not, you're going to continue living. And so don't believe this lie that once you die, that's it, you just cease to exist. No, you will continue to exist. Your mind will know, your emotions will be there. You will have your soul, your will, your mind, your emotion. Those things continue and your spirit continues. But how do you know where you go when you die? Many of us, we live life however we want. We do whatever we want. But let me give you a little backstory. God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And when he created them, he told them, eat of any tree you want, have freedom, but don't touch this particular tree. However, they did not listen and they decided to do what they wanted to do when Satan came and tempted them. The moment Satan tempted them and they said yes and they disobeyed God, sin entered the world. And because sin entered the world, we were separated from God. And therefore, we no longer had access to God like they once did. And God brought about Moses, who brought about, uh, God brought about Abraham. And from Abraham, God brought about Moses and so forth and so forth. And God established the laws and the commandments of how you should live. And God put in priests and God put in prophets and God put in kings. These were ways that we can get access to God. God put in prophets because man was just sinful and God needed someone that he could be a mouthpiece through. God put in prophets and God put in high priest because these were people who would help us to to, uh, uh, abide according to the laws of God. But even with that, men could not satisfy and uphold all the laws of God. And so God decided there was only one thing that would be best. He had to send his son because all the sacrifices that man was doing did not please God. It did not please God. God wanted one sacrifice that would atone for every sin, past, present, and future. And it had to be a priceless sacrifice. And so God decided to send his only son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came. He lived a perfect life. He humbled himself, came down from heaven. He lived as a man. He gave his all. And he he willingly sacrificed himself and took the sins of the world so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He died and on the third day he rose from the grave. Let me say that again. He gave his life and on the third day he rose again. And therefore when you and I believe in Jesus, we are set free. The law of God back in the Old Testament was impossible for you and I to complete. And like for example, you couldn't mix clothing. There were certain things you couldn't eat. You had to do certain things at certain times. And so it was difficult and it was hard to to fulfill. You had to be close to perfect. And so God decided, I don't want them having to worry about that. So I'm going to send myself in the image of my son, Jesus Christ. And he's going to fulfill the whole law. And he's going to be a perfect lamb that will be led to the slaughter. So that when he dies, the blood that that, that he dies, his blood will continue to atone the sins of generations to come. And so that's what happened. Jesus' blood is still speaking. His blood is still healing. His blood is still washing our sins. Now, the only thing is, do you want his blood? Do you want Jesus? Think of it this way. Imagine you are on trial for something that you committed. We sinned against God. And because we sinned against him, we were held to judgment 
of damnation and go into hell for eternity. You are in trial for murder for a very heinous crime that you've committed. And the judge knows that you're guilty. And everybody in the courtroom knows that you're guilty. And you know that you're guilty. And you know you're about to spend the rest of your life in jail. Here comes your lawyer. And your lawyer says, hey, judge, let me take on their punishment. Give them my freedom and I'll take their punishment. I'll spend the rest of my life in prison but you just give them the opportunity to walk away. That's what Jesus did for you and me. Jesus went to God and said, here, I will sacrifice myself. I'll give my life for theirs. The Bible says no greater love is this than for a man to lay down his life for his friend. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus sacrificed himself so you and I don't have to ever be separated from him. The Bible says that for God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. God made it very clear. His desire is not to send you to hell. Hell and the lake of fire was not created for us. It was not created for you and I. It was created for the devil and the fallen angels, not for us. God doesn't want us to be separate from him. In the book of Ezekiel, God talks about he doesn't have any pride or take any pride in the wickedness going to hell. And when you hear things like that, it should register to you and say God loves you so much that he is willing to kill himself just so that you can come to him. Some of us, we don't want to accept Christ Jesus but we know he is the truth. When you accept Jesus, he will take away your anxiety. He will take away your pain. He will take away your sorrow. He will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. It's not, I'm not saying life is not gonna be difficult. I'm not saying everything just becomes cherry blossoms and rosy and you don't go through difficult times. I'm saying even in the midst of those situations, the Bible makes it clear that we have a high priest that has been through everything and he has overcome the world. So in Christ Jesus, we have our freedom. Do you know Jesus? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? If you haven't accepted Jesus, the clock is still ticking. You are not guaranteed to live past today. You're not guaranteed to see the next 24 hours. I knew people right before the new year, they passed away. You're not better than them. It's the grace of God that is keeping you alive. And if you don't know Jesus, this is the perfect time to get to know him. And if you know Jesus and you refuse to walk according to his will and his purpose, this is the perfect time to come back to him. The Bible talks about a prodigal son who left, but then he came back. And when he was coming back, the father from afar saw him and ran to him. God always wants us to turn back to him. He wants us to repent. He will never say, I am done with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. Why? Because that's outside of his nature. What he desires is for you to come to your senses and for you to say, I need you. We can't live life without Jesus. And we should not live life outside of Jesus. Don't miss heaven because you just want to live life and have fun. You can have fun and love Jesus. You can have fun and remain holy. You can have fun and live for Jesus. The world tells you do whatever you want. Live however you want. Act however you want. But what the world doesn't tell you is everything you do here is laying a foundation of what happens to you when you pass away. You're going to keep on living whether you like it or not. Do you rather stay in the place of eternity with Christ Jesus, or you rather go to hell where you are tormented for the rest of your life. Jesus doesn't want that for you. That's why he came. He came so that you can be assured that when you close your eyes one day and you happen to open it on the other side, you will open it in eternal glory with him in heaven. I want to encourage you today. If you don't know Jesus, today's the perfect day. The Bible says, when you hear the word of the Lord, don't harden your hearts. And according to the book of Romans chapter 10, it says, how do you receive God? You have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. So for some of you who are watching and you're saying, I want Jesus. Some of you, you're feeling something right now because this is speaking to you. You want Jesus and you want to feel him. You want to experience him. I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to pray and you're going to feel the presence of God. Father, I pray right now over every man and over every woman, every person watching, that you would touch them wherever they are. Let your presence come upon them right now from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. As they watch this video, begin to speak to them, Lord. Let the conviction of the Holy Spirit come upon them, Lord. Let the love of God come upon them like a wave. Go through their body right now. Fill up wherever they are, Lord Jesus, and remind them that you are speaking to them. There it is. More. Father, I thank you right now for touching hearts. I thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. 
If you felt something, I want you to comment. And if you are ready to give your life to Christ, or maybe you knew Jesus, but you're not living for Jesus. Maybe you are in the church, but you're not living for Jesus. I want you to make a decision that I'm coming back home. Jesus says in the book of Ezekiel, we understand that he doesn't want the wicked to perish, but he calls us to repent and to look up to him. You will never experience joy like being with Jesus, peace like being with Jesus. The world can offer you money, sex, women, cars, clothes, fame, everything else that you can think of. But trust me, there's nothing like having a relationship with Jesus because it beats everything else. And if that's where you are and you want to accept Jesus, I need you to say this with me. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I want you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my sins. Wash me of my sins. I want you to be my friend. I want you to come into my life. Help me to lay everything at your feet. Help me to turn from my wicked ways. Today, I choose you. Help me to choose you always. Help me to run to you. Come into my heart. Make me whole. And change my life. I accept you and I profess you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, comment amen and, and welcome to the family. If you pray that prayer, I want you to comment below and let other people know because this could encourage somebody else that is watching. Make sure to comment and let us continue this journey together. This is the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. Now you can secure your place in heaven because you have said yes to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. The next thing you need to do, make sure you join a Bible believing church. Get yourself a Bible. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Start with one verse or one chapter a day. And as you read the word of God and get connected to other believers, God will work with you. I love you all. I bless you all. Welcome to the family.